but what does it take to master the art of buying? Well, in addition to having the qualities I was talking about a moment ago, uh, I think leaders have to be really good at mastering what I call the three M's of buy-in. And I've summed them up in a model which is on the screen now. And you'll see that these three M's are basically about becoming a master of mood, a master of mind, and a master of movement. I think leaders have to be able to get all three of these right in balance and different circumstances might require emphasis on different elements of this puzzle. Um, this is a matter not just of strategy in terms of what you do in your conversations and overall, but it's also a matter of preparation. So giving some really good thinking time to each of these three M's. So let's take a look at each of them in turn. So firstly, mood. Mood is this whole thing of how do you actually help people to feel an idea? or an initiative, because after all, it's the heart that tells the head where to focus its energy. Like if you get people emotionally bought into something, they're much more prepared to listen, um, invest their time into thinking through something, and ultimately to act, which is obviously what we want. So leaders need to be good at creating this emotional disposition to yes, to agreement, it creates a kind of bias. They can do this through a number of different ways. I think the most important way for a leader is you have to be really good at uh, projecting the mood. You have to know what it is the mood that you want your audience to feel and then be that mood, epitomise it. I was working with one leader who was presenting to some customers. Her name was Bernadette and we were practising a presentation she was going to do with her customers and she was standing up at the lectern and giving us a dry run of this presentation. And I said, Bernadette, can you just tell me in a word what it is you want your audience to feel? And she thought about it for a moment. She said, I want them to feel intrigued. And I said, well, how are you going to make that happen? And she said, okay, leave it with me. I got it. And she stopped and she reflected for a moment and instantly she just changed her whole body language, her tone of voice, everything. Before she'd even opened her mouth, I was intrigued. I think that's a great example of where leaders have to take the time to think about how are they going to make that happen. Another great way we create that emotional resonance is through the use of stories. I think leaders who can craft or choose stories and then tell them well in a way that takes their audience into what the problem is or what the opportunity is in an authentic and very real way um, have a real power in creating mood. So now let's have a look at the second dimension of this 3M model, which is mind. And this is basically the question of giving them a reason. How, you know, why would I say yes to something? It's the world of logic uh, and it's probably the most obvious of these three M's. When we work in mind, we're fundamentally answering the question for our audience, why should you say yes? And that's a function of both the value of my idea, like does it stack up, the benefit of it, as weighed against the cost and the risks, the downsides, but also is there enough proof that justifies saying yes? The thing with mind is that it's not simply about slamming your audience with a business case. I think leaders have to be very good at putting down the PowerPoint presentation and actually engaging with your stakeholders, your audience, and wondering how do I take them on this path to a logical yes? Taking the time to explain and then to learn a little bit about people's concerns and not just to listen to those concerns, but actually to embrace that conversation to be welcoming the, the idea that someone may be hesitant about what you've proposed and to accept that unless you get over that, they're never going to buy into your idea. So giving them that ear. Um, then taking the time to invent perhaps different strategies or ways of going about your idea uh, before you finally kind of recommend and build agreement towards something. So mind is really where you need to take your time and go slow to go fast. The third dimension is that of movement. And this is sometimes the forgotten cousin, the poor cousin in the world of buy-in. Often when people talk about buy-in, leaders think purely about this idea of how do I get people to yes? How do I get them to say yes and mean it? And while that's great, it's not enough because fundamentally the act of buy-in is about changing action. So movement is about being a master of turning yes into agreement. And how often have we been in situations where people have said yes, perhaps even enthusiastically, and never followed through on it? I think when we talk about being a master of movement, leaders need to be really good at spending as much time as they spend building agreement on then talking about action and accountability. I started my career working as a commercial lawyer and I couldn't get over the number of times when a client would say, what if the other party doesn't follow through on this agreement? 
one of the lawyers acting for one of these parties would say, oh, don't worry, we've got them stitched up. We can take them to the cleaners. It's like, well, hang on, I think you've missed the point a little bit here. Don't we actually want movement to happen? So leaders have to be good at sitting with people and saying, so what is it going to take to turn this conversation into reality? What's going to make it hard? What's going to get in the way? What do we need for this? And there are three kind of questions you've got to be asking there. I think, how do you get people started? How do you then scaffold them up so that the change is easy to stick to and to learn, especially in that first kind of 30 or 60 day period? And then how do you make the change sustainable for the long term? And by working through those things, I think leaders are able to get people a long way along that path to movement. So there you have it, the three M's, which for me represent the essence of what it takes to master this art of buying.